Yo, welcome back TPL Nation for another draft analysis video. And I gotta say, this is a very interesting team that we're about to go in. It's gonna be the amazing Alec Uzams hosted and coached by the one and only Q. And uh, Q obviously coming off a good, a decent playoff run. He wasn't able to carry it all the way. But um, I'm very interesting to see what he's got planned for us this season because he is pretty much just building on uh, what he was on the leftovers from last season. So um, as we move into his team right here, we have uh, really the linchpin, the uh, glue that holds it together, the Ndidi. I feel like uh, that psychic surge is going to come just about any week, uh, any and every week really. Um, running the terrain extender to extend that psychic terrain just really helps his team absolutely. Um, so there's not a whole lot to say about Ndidi, but um, about what it does, it does very decently well. I feel like Psychic is just a great stab move. Um, Hyper Voice as well. Um, it does suffer from Steel types a little bit, but uh, yeah, I do believe it does get Mystical Fire, so it can at least cover that. Um, so I feel like while, while it may not hit uh, the absolute hardest, it definitely can. Um, so expanding force, obviously getting that 1.5 boost under the uh, psychic terrain. So all of a sudden that 80 base power is 120 base power stab psychic. So a really strong, strong, powerful move. And even off Ndidi, like its stats aren't the worst. Um, you know, I believe the male does run more of a offensive capability. So Q does have that option here with the Ndidi. But for the main reason why it's here, we move on to the glass cannon of the team. The one, the only, the OG Alakazam. And I could definitely see this Pokemon putting absolute work in uh, for Q's team. I mean, if you run something like a choice spec set, like, uh, like this thing's just tearing through your opponent. I mean, you're looking at expanding force. Uh, if you can't hit them with expanding force, throw, throw off a shadow ball. Uh, I believe this thing, yeah, it does get focus blast. So if you want to try it for focus miss, you can do that on the dark types. Um, or just uh, it would just run dazzling gleam because not everybody has a skun tank or a drapion on their team. So um, obviously, some very good coverage moves all in all from Alakazam. I mean, you're probably going to see the max speed, max special attack from Alakazam, 120 base speed, so it's going to outspeed a lot of stuff. And um, another uh, really good utility, I feel like, of Psychic Terrain is that it stops priority moves, which I feel like can really hinder an already damaged uh, Alakazam. If Alakazam uh, lives a light hit, maybe, and survives on like a few HP, your opponent's going to be looking on their team and like, man, even the priority I packed can't stop this Alakazam. Being able to stop stuff like Shadow Sneak and Sucker Punch, I feel like is just a really overlooked ability of Psychic Terrain that really benefits Q's team. We do see another uh, new threat on his team uh, in the Metagross, which I feel like will definitely be a very scary member. So it does have the ability Clear Body, which uh, is very nice because if you're running that physical Metagross, uh, you can say goodbye to Intimidate and other things like that, other shenanigans. Uh, but in the VGC tournament that I uh, recently ran, shout out to the Stank, um, I actually used an Assault Vest Metagross, and I felt like it was really powerful for Dynamaxing because with this Pokemon, you're not necessarily trying to uh, build... Uh, snowball out of control and really build an attacker but you're basically building like a wall that can't be brought down so obviously you could run something like iron head um if you you could run the expanding force for a mix set but i feel like you're still going to get more mileage out of just running the normal zen headbutt um don't forget zen headbutt still will be getting a boost uh in psychic terrain so a very strong move definitely coming off uh, Metagross's 135 base attack stat. I feel like the expanding force set, while he could use it, I feel like that's just doubling down on too many special attackers for him. I feel like he gets more mileage out of the uh, Zen Headbutt. And honestly, we could see the Earthquake come out. Um, and for a last move, I mean, you can just take your, uh, take your pick on this coverage that it gets. I mean, we could just throw Ice Punch on there. 
Um, obviously, it gets access to other moves like Thunder Punch. Um, very wide move pool as we just scroll down through here. It gets uh, really good draft league picks and explosion. It does get bullet uh, bullet punch just in case. I don't really see bullet punch coming out too much on Cube's team since he will be fighting in his psychic terrain. I doubt priority moves will really be on his mind at all. Um, but with explosion, maybe to take something huge out, he does have that option. You're also looking at hammer arm for a nice uh, fighting attack. Uh, and honestly, dude, this thing, I mean, Meteor Mash, if you want to raise its uh, attack, I probably should have ran uh, Meteor Mash over Iron Head. That's probably a better, a better move for Metagross, seeing as how that was like its signature move back in the day. Um, and I mean, it really does get a lot of uh, interesting moves. Uh, power Up Punch, I feel like you might see come out on it. Iron Defense, if it wants to just get insanely bulky. Um... But also, if you don't want to run the Assault Vest set, um, it, it gets access to Agility and Rock Polish, so I mean, take your pick. But you know, with 70 base speed, uh, at plus 2 speed, this thing's going to be really fast and could really get out of control for your opponent here. Um, so I feel like while not having access to its Mega, uh, Metagross was definitely a good, good first round pick. And um, I'm very interested to see... Uh, all the things that this Pokemon is going to do for Q's team. Uh, we could definitely see some craziness come out for it. So, you know, it does have Aerial Ace, so it could it could max Airstream if it really wanted to, to possibly spiral out of control for your opponent. But um, I feel like I really love Metagross for its exceptional bulk. Uh, not just the special defensive side, but also the defense side. Like, I think uh, when I was running that VGC tournament, I think this thing took a Shadow Ball from a Spectrier, and um, I think it only took like 30%, 30-35%. So this thing can be very bulky with an Assault Vest. Uh, you could run, obviously, you could run, um, you know, Life Orb if you just wanted to boost its attack normally. Uh, maybe go with that Agility set that I talked about earlier. But I feel like Metagross has a lot of different sets it can use, and um, there's a lot of danger associated just with trying to handle this Pokemon. So I definitely like that. Um, as we move on, uh, we go probably to the most slept on legendary in the draft, if I remember correctly. It was either this or Entei. Uh, but Regis went very close to the end. And I honestly don't understand why. I mean, look at this, dude. If you want a special defensive wall, like, go for it. Granted, Ice isn't, like, the best typing to take special defensive hits. But, I mean, I just think um, that what Reg Ice does, it just does exceptionally well. I mean, you go uh, Ice Beam. You go Thunderbolt for the Bolt Beam coverage, easy Bolt Beam coverage. If you want to annoy your Pokemon, slap Rest on it. You want to run a Rest Sleep Talk? I actually like love this set for Reg Ice. Not Sleep Powder, Sleep Talk. I actually love this uh, set for Reg Ice. Um, once again, with Clear Body, it's uh, not going to be. It's not going to have its uh, stats lowered, but not too crazy of an ability right there. Um, obviously, Leftovers would serve it very well. Um, I suppose you could go four attacks assault vest and just eat up any specially defensive hit that's thrown your way. I mean, I think uh, assault vest pushes that uh, spadef stat up to 300. Well, I think it's a 1.5 boost if I remember correctly. So obviously, this thing can really put in some some work. And I feel like with bolt beam, you're covering a lot of types there. And um, since you are, since you do have that easy to access bolt beam coverage, rest sleep talk is a very good uh, combination. And I, I really don't like rest sleep talk a lot of the time, but I feel like it just stands out to me on Reg Ice as really being a uh, good ex good accessibility. If you count your rest turns, use sleep talk. If like yeah, you can roll sleep talk. We've all done that before. But if you don't, you get a free ice beam, free thunderbolt, all while your opponent's attempting to wear you down. Um, so I do like Reg Ice. I feel like there is a threat of it getting set up on or maybe powered through by a strong fighting type. But um, unless you're fighting uh, turn one Dynamax, uh, that might not be an option for your opponent. So um, I do like Reg Ice on uh, Q's team. It's very interesting, a special wall. Um, as we move on, 
to uh, one of the real like I don't, I don't know like niche picks um, in Sharpedo and like Sharpedo is a great Pokemon like it, it truly is and I'm not just saying that because Anthony might be watching this video um, it's a very good Pokemon I mean we all know what Sharpedo can do protect waterfall stab crunch and stab waterfall hit incredibly hard um, even when it's com like it's coming off a base 120 attack stat like very good very good Pokemon here I feel like it's a very good premier life orb abuser as well uh, so Sharpedo can really uh, get through Pokemon but I feel like it kind of stands out as like a sore thumb on his team and um, what I really think that is because what we're trying to see here is that um, dark moves in general um, and especially knockoff he doesn't really have like great switch-ins for it I mean Regice is still gonna take a good amount from a knockoff uh, and Sharpedo just is not bulky enough to switch into dark moves um, with 40 uh, with a 40 defense stat and 40 spdf stat is just not very bulky it's not living too many hits and that's not what Sharpedo's role is so I'm very interested to see what Q's plan is for handling those dark moves because as we move uh, through his draft, through his roster, I really think that that's going to become a glaring weakness for him. And while he does shut out the Sucker Punch, I feel like just bulkier dark types in general uh, can just throw off free knockoffs and free dark moves into his team with almost no repercussion. Um, as we move on to another very interesting Pokemon uh, in Talonflame. So obviously Talonflame, this this poor bird, has been uh, nerfed almost into oblivion with Gale Wings. Uh, Gale Wings suffering two nerfs in the last few generations. Um, but I feel like it is still an interesting Pokemon. I just don't know if it's the greatest uh, Pokemon for this team. Because with Gale Wings, uh, with Talonflame at full health, it actually won't get the. It'll actually have its uh, priority moves blocked by Psychic Terrain. So that is, while T Talonflame could be decent outside of the Psychic Terrain, I feel like just in Psychic Terrain, it's just not the best thing um, to really function or help the team out. But I feel like if Q's, I feel like Q's main strategy, of course, will be the Psychic Terrain. So. Um, you know, Talonflame could definitely take advantage of that stuff while outside uh, being another decent Dynamax target, I feel. Um, so, I mean, just of course, just a premier um, set of just like maybe Swords Dance, the Flare Blitz, uh, the Brave Bird, and uh, maybe Roost if you want a little bit more survivability. But to me, um, I never really saw Talonflame as a great Roost Pokemon. Um, but he definitely has like certain certain uh, options for this. Um, the weirdest thing is I think he's running out of really premier uh, physical attacking item users. I know that's kind of like a weird thing to think about, but I just thinking. I mean, this is like the third Pokemon that I've typed in Life Orb on, and I feel like it really needs Life Orb. Uh, over something like Choice Band. Like, you could run Choice Band at Brave Bird, um, and that would hit ridiculously hard, but you might just be limiting your, some of your other options with Talonflame. But hey, Choice Band at Brave Bird, coming off a uh, 81 base attack, um, it is stab, it's very fast, so you're probably going to run uh, max speed. Uh, you could honestly just go ahead and go full adamant, why not? And, um, you know, it does hit really hard, but I feel like it really is going to it, it kind of hinders itself just from being on a psychic terrain team and i feel like town flame already has enough going against it um to really limit it i mean uh it really you should probably just run boots on it for any uh, entry hazards because uh as we see in a minute um he has three pokemon that are weak to stealth rock just right off the bat and um i feel like entry hazards are just a good like option in general against q's team because um if you're fearing like a Focus Sash Sharpedo or a Focus Sash Alakazam, set up the rocks. Like he can only have one Boots user, and I feel like if he brings Talonflame, he loses out on a lot of potential from Talonflame if he doesn't bring Boots. So it's kind of like the old mantra of 
entry hazards as being an issue for his team. But um, we'll see. He might make some late game moves to uh, really uh, turn that around for him. Uh, we do move into his next uh, wall, which is Chansey. And um, we all know what Chansey does. Very, very annoying Pokemon. Huge HP. Another special wall. So you'll, you'll see it's kind of interesting that he chose to go two special walls, Regice and Chansey. This could change up later. But um, I like Chansey and what it brings to the table, obviously, with Stealth Rock, uh, Seismic Toss. Um, it gets a plethora of other moves like Counter and all kinds of very interesting uh, moves that, it, that uh, you wouldn't really think are useful, but in Draft League are very, very useful and can really turn around uh, games for you. But um, also, uh, just looking through its moveset, I mean, Heal Bell, Healing Wish, very good uh, moves that you could see come out from the Chansey. If it wants to set up screens, it could definitely do that. If it wants to rest, um, I believe Chansey can wisp Wish Pass as well. So also a very interesting uh, move to use. Um, hey man, you might want to go uh, Calm Mind Store Power. Just saying, Q, and, and under Psychic Terrain with the Chansey. Heck, why not, dude? Throw up that substitute and that huge HP substitute and poke them. Like, if they can't bust through it with one move, hey, that's kind of like an interesting move. So Chansey is an interesting Pokemon. I feel like it does run the risk of getting set up on. Uh, but I mean, with any wall, you're gonna you're gonna have to be mindful of that because that could happen for you, especially if you're not packing something like haze or clear smog. So, um, Chansey could be interesting, but to be honest, when I look at Chansey, it's just another knockoff weakness. Um, I really don't like the fact that um, he's doubling. Like he, he really has just a very big knockoff weakness and not a whole lot of answers for it. Um, Regice could be a good potential knockoff switch in, but that thing can get worn down. Um, but we'll see what he likes to play as. He, he play at there. He could play around it just fine. But um, you know, with knockoff being one of the best moves in the game, arguably the best move in the game, um, you know, it's just not very. It's not a great weakness to have. Um, but uh, that's okay. We've talked about it already, and we're just going to move into his last Pokemon, Reboot the mini Cinderace. Um, I love Reboot. I feel like it can really come through with um, some interesting moves. Of course, it gets bounced. Uh, does this thing get Pyro Ball? It does not get Pyro Ball, so that's unfortunate. But it does have access to other fire moves, like um, I know it gets Blaze Kick, High Jump Kick still. Um, so it can pretty much do the same thing that Cinderace can do. Um, with a possible Dynamax advantage as well. I mean, you could run Life Orb. It doesn't necessarily have to run Eviolite. I would honestly say that you're probably better off not running Eviolite, maybe even a Choice Band. So, like, whatever move you go for, it just, like, is boosted very hard. Um, and then it, it hits extremely hard even without Dynamax. And to be honest, 94 base speed isn't slow by any means. Um, especially in Draft League when you're running up on somebody's team and they might not have access to like four Pokemon that have over 100 base speed. Like, Rabu could really get some good utility going for it. Um, but it's not going to be like very bulky on his team, obviously. Um, so I do like his team overall. Of course, I feel like, you know, that glaring knockoff weakness, I feel like if he could just, like, get rid of that, maybe a bulky dark type. Um, dude, honestly, Guzzlord on this team would be insane. Wonderful uh, knockoff switch in. But um, his team very, very much so is very offensive. I do like it. Um, the Metagross is a huge threat. The Alakazam is a huge threat. Um, if you sleep on Regice, it can definitely definitely be a horrible late game on to try to deal with the sharpedos right there like uh all in all um you know very interesting pokemon and if he plays it right like this this is obviously going to be one of the top tier threats and i feel like we could definitely already see the um the cues make it in and the playoffs again and i'm very interested to see uh what changes happen on his team what falls what come on um but I definitely feel like Q can definitely improve this team. But he's got the groundwork. Like, if we look up here, like, there's... I don't see anything wrong with these first four Pokemon. 
Um, and my only complaint with like uh, Chansey or, or Talonflame or Sharpedo is they don't really fit the team, in my opinion. Like, that's my opinion. I could be wrong. Um, but just adding on to that, I feel like if he just had something to, to you know, take those dark moves, take those dark weaknesses, um, I feel like that would benefit Q a lot in the long run. Um, so what I'm going to rank this team is I'm actually going to go 6.5. I do think it's very threatening all in all. Um, definitely going to be, it's not going to be an, an easy gimme week at all, but I do feel like it has a lot of potential, a lot, a lot of hidden potential. Like, I feel like if you could get a couple Pokemon to really, um, just not worry about dark moves on this team or maybe something specifically to kill dark Pokemon, like honestly, a Slurpuff on this team would have been insane. Um just to be able to switch into knockoffs and then activating that uh that unburden boost and then in psychic terrain you don't have to worry about priority so ugh, that's something scary to think about but i feel like uh q is still going to be a huge threat this season um but uh he really should work on um maybe just uh working on the potential of his team but i feel like he's got the tools to definitely get early w's in this league and um we'll see what shakes out as far as uh after the draft the free agency for his team but um that's been the uh Lola, the uh, alolan alakazams the amazing alakazams uh coached by q and um i've been ace trainer ryan and i'll see you guys in another video peace